Okay, so once we've got the camera on the tripod, uh, we need to turn the camera on and reset all the settings back to factory standard um, so that everything is clear and fresh to go. So to turn the camera on, we're just going to go to the back of the camera, press this little green button in and flick it round to camera mode. Okay. The top of the camera here is your LCD screen. You can open that and you twist that round. Okay. Um, to reset the camera, you need to get yourself a pen or a paper clip. Underneath where the LCD screen will normally sit when it's closed, you've got your buttons for playing, etc. Um, in there, you've got a little button that says reset. This is where you need your pen on your paper clip. And you just press that in and it will reset the camera for you. It takes a couple of seconds to do this. Once the camera has been reset, you will be asked to set the time and date. It's really important that you do this because you'll need it for later on when we set the external recording device to the camera. OK, so on the side of the camera here, we have this button and this wheel that says cell push execute. OK, you can scroll up and down using this and you can press it in to execute the function. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to set the date. OK, so scrolling up and down and set the time. OK, so once we've uh, set the time and date, we will then see our screen. Your screen will appear black and that's because on the front of the camera, by the lens hood, you have uh, the lens hood that will open and close. So if we slide that up, it will open and we will be able to see our picture. OK, so in front of the camera, the lens hood, which protects the lens from any glare, from any direct light. Um, and then just behind that, we have our focus ring and our zoom ring. So on these cameras, we can zoom in one of two ways. We can either use the ring on the front of the camera by turning it one way or the other. So we zoom in and we zoom out. Or on the opposite side of the camera where your handle is, you have a rocker where you can zoom in or you can zoom out. Okay. Both are completely dependent on how smoothly you turn that focus ring yourself. So for example, if I turn quickly, it will zoom in quickly or zoom out. And the further down I press the rocker, the quicker it will zoom. OK, so that's our zoom. Next thing that we want to do is once we've set the camera up, we've set the position at where we want the camera to be, we need to focus on our subject. In order to focus the camera, we need to make sure that the switch here at the side is set to manual. So we're going to make sure that's flipped to manual, which it is. And then I'm going to zoom in. So if you have one of these focus cards, you can zoom in on the focus card and focus. If you don't have one of these, you will need to zoom in on your subject's eye line, eyebrow, hairline, and focus to somewhere where there's detail that you can focus on. Once you zoom out, the focus will be held for you. When you're focusing within the menu system, you have something called peaking that you can set up that will give you highlighted lines on the areas that are in focus. So in order to set that up, we're going to press the menu button on the side of the camera, and we're going to go down to the third option, which says display set. I'm going to go into that option and the third one down within there says peek in. So again, I'm using this scroll wheel, scrolling up and down and pressing the button in. I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn peek in on. The colour I'm going to set to red because I like to use red because I find that it stands out quite a lot. Your other options are white or yellow. And the level you can set to high, medium or low. So it will just give, if you've got it set to high, the lines on your peek in will be slightly thicker. So I'm going to set mine to middle just as it's the kind of middle ground. <clears throat> okay, to come out of the menu, I'm just going to press the menu button again. So now I've got these red highlighted lines on the areas that are, which are in focus, so it just enables me to focus. Okay, so once I've done that, I can then zoom out, and my subject is then in focus, and as I zoom out, I will see the lines in the areas that are in focus. Okay, so moving on from the focus ring and the zoom ring, we then have this other ring which is called an iris ring. OK, and this will control the iris, whether it's open or whether it's closed. In order to manually control this, um, we need to make sure that this switch that's at the side of the camera is set to manual. So I'm going to flick this down. Currently, that still means that the camera is in auto mode. In order for you to override the auto mode still, you need to press the corresponding button to the setting to which you wish to manually control. So you have the iris exposure button here, the gain button here, white balance and shutter speed. You will know when you're manually controlling the camera because you will see the icons on the screen to that setting. So I want to manually control my iris, I'm going to press this button and it will say F and then the figure next to that for which represents the value of the aperture or the iris that you're using. 
If, however, you want to control one thing manually on these cameras, you will need to control everything else, otherwise the camera will try and compensate for what you are trying to do. So, for example, if you have a higher aperture value, so a smaller opening, um, it may then try and slow the shutter speed down to make your image brighter. So what I'm going to now do is press the gain button, the white balance button and the shutter speed button. So at the bottom of my screen now, I can see all four values. Okay, so I know that is now being manually controlled. If I flick this switch back to auto, the camera will automatically be controlled for me. Put it back to manual. Okay, so to control my iris, um, I'm just going to turn this back ring down, okay, and it will go as low as 2.8, or I can turn it up and it will go as high as f11, or then it will close. Okay, so our image will go dark. So I'm going to set my aperture value. So depending um, on what you are trying to achieve from your visual image um, will depend on what aperture value you use, so whether you require a depth of field, a shallow depth of field, or a wide depth of field. Okay, so um, that's how we control the iris. <clears throat> the next thing that we want to control um, would be our shutter speed. So on the side of the camera, again, we've got shutter speed. On my screen, I have a grey box which will represent my shutter speed. Again, using this select wheel, I'm going to turn that down. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, we will use a shutter speed value of 50 for when we're shooting video. Anything slower than 50, um, so for example, 25, will make our image slightly brighter. If we start to go any lower than that, it will make our image even more brighter and it will give us a very stroby effect. Okay. okay, so I've set that to 50. The other settings now that we may want to set is something called the neutral density filter or the ND filter. Um, you've got three levels of ND filter and you can flick this up, so we flick it to one, and this effectively is making our image darker. Okay. Um, as you flick this switch up and down, um, it will flick on your screen and if you are recording, that will be recorded. So you just need to be careful that if you're in the middle of shooting that you don't change your ND filter unless you don't need that material that you're recording. Okay, so if I set that to one, my image is darker. I set it to two, it's even more darker, and three more so. So I'm just gonna set that to one. So for example, if I'm using a lower aperture value because I need to have a shallow depth of field, um, I may need to use an ND filter if I'm filming in bright circumstances. Okay. So, following on from the ND filter, we then have our gain control. And gain control is a means of electronically brightening our image. So, if we are shooting at night time, for example, and we're filming something that's a landscape, um, we would need to have a higher aperture value so that we get that deep depth of field. Um, but we then may find that our image is quite dark. So, we can turn this gain on. So, on my screen at the moment, um, it says 0 dB, which means my gain switch is set to the L mode, which means low. If I flick that to medium, by default it will change it to 9 dB of gain. If I switch it to high, it will set it to 18 dB of gain. We can go into the menu system and we can change those values. So you may wish to have low at 3 dB, for example, medium at 6 dB and high at 9 dB. It completely depends on your circumstances in which you're filming. Okay, so. As you will see, that image will then get brighter, so it does the opposite to what a neutral density filter would do. It will make your image brighter as opposed to darker. What you need to remember, um, especially if you're filming something that's quite dark, um, if you use a high amount of gain, your image will become very noisy, very grainy. Um, so your blacks won't be particularly smooth. You'll see a little bit of distortion on there. So it's always something to bear in mind when you're filming. Okay. Our last setting on the side of the camera is our white balance. Okay, <clears throat> again we have a little silver switch at the side of the white balance, uh, below the white balance, sorry, um, and we can have that set to preset, which in the menu we can change that preset from indoor tungsten lighting or outdoor uh, daylight, or we can set our own Kelvin values. Okay, um, the other way that we can white balance is by having the switch next to A or B. So if we switch that next to A or B, um, I'm then going to zoom in onto something that's white and I'm going to focus. And then just to the side of, the side of that switch, we have a little circular button. I'm going to press and hold that. At the bottom right hand corner of my screen, I will see a little A that will blink really quickly and then it will set to a value and it will tell me what that white balance colour temperature is. 
If I then zoom out, <coughs> the colours that I see on my screen should be visually representative of what I am filming. I can then switch that switch to B if I wish. So if I move to a different location, I can switch that to B. I can set white balance. And then providing the lighting stays consistent in the two areas, I can just flick between A and B whenever I move location. OK, so it saves you having to re-white balance. That's indoors. If you are outdoors, um, you will need to white balance on more of a regular occurrence because the lighting will change from when uh, you have dawn all the way around to dusk. So you would need to white balance on more regular occasions.